Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here for another Visual Basic tutorial to be you get that A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with writing to a CSV file. So, what do I mean by a CSV file? I mean any file which has commas to separate each value. This could actually be a .csv file, but this could also apply to something like a .txt file. If you swap the file extensions around, it will work regardless. So, how do we actually go about doing this? Essentially, we write data or records to a text file, CSV file, whatever you want to call it, and each field of that record will have a comma after, or a new line to tell the computer, right, this is where the field or record ends. So let's get right into it. Firstly, we need to make a function called write to file. We're going to pass in but a a file path as a string, and it's going to be by, by value. We don't need the reference, we just need the value. We're going to be passing a field1 string, a field2 string, and a field3 string. Again, all by value. You can pass in as many as you want, but have a string for each field. These three fields will make up one record, which is what we're going to write to our file. We also need to pass in a delimiter. A delimiter is what separates each field of a record. In this case, we've passed in a comma, but this code will allow you to have anything you want as your delimiter. And this is a Boolean function, so we can return a Boolean to where we're calling it to indicate if we've successfully written to the file or not. So this is the code we're going to put into our function. So let's go through it. Firstly, we need a try and a catch. Why? Well, if we fail right into the file, we don't want the program to crash. We just simply want to print out a little message saying the record wasn't written and return a false to signify to where we called a function that the, we couldn't write to the file. It's more elegant than letting the program crash. So inside our try, by the way, try catch is try a chunk of code if anything goes wrong, execute what's in the exception to prevent the program from crashing, then carry on as normal. So what's in our try catch statement? So we need to declare a file writer in memory. And we're going to do it. So we're going to call our object file writer. And it's going to be a new system.io.streamwriter. We pass in file path, which is our string there for where the file's going to be. And we pass in a true. A true means we append to a file, which means add to the end of the file. Well, if we put this to false, it would overwrite the file. As we are dealing with adding records, we want to append to the file, not overwrite the file. If you want to overwrite the file, like let's say for a video game save, then you'd want to pass in false. But for writing records, we want to have true passed in. Then we do a record, a string, a record string equals field one plus delimiter plus field two plus delimiter plus field three. Essentially, we're going to put all three of the fields, or, or however many you want to pass into the function, into one string to make it easier. And we put a delimiter between each field, obviously, to separate them. Then we do filewriter.writeLine, record. That's pretty simple, right? We're just doing what we do with printing text, where we do write line. Then we do filewriter.close. Why? Well, it's bad to leave your file writer open if you're not using it or your file open when you're not using it. It's like writing to your diary. When you finish writing to your diary, you don't just leave the diary right open on your desk. You kind of like close it and maybe put a little lock on it. We're not doing the lock thing in this case, but we are closing the diary so people don't see what you're doing. Then we do console.write line record written. And then we return a true as we've written to the file. As a result, we want to tell the program where the function was called, hey, we successfully written to the file. And obviously, if uh, we execute the catch code, after we've got a return false to imply, hey, we couldn't write to the file, let's return a false. And that's it, guys. So you're going to be like, right, Max, how do we know you you're actually doing this? Well, I'll show you. Uh, go to your Visual Basic project folder. Go into the main folder. Then go to bin, debug. And this is where files will be by default if you literally just pass in the name. We're using test.txt. We've got some records in here and we're going to delete them. Now we're going to click save. 
So now we have an empty file. Just to show you again, empty file. We have a very empty file here. And I'm going to show you that when we run this code, we're going to, pa we're going to pass in 111, pato, and 43 as the fields of a record. So let's click play. Or start in this case, because it's not a game. As you can see, it says ret record written. Let's open up test.txt. As you can see, we've written a record. We're going to try this again to show you if it adds to the end of the file. Record written. As you can see, it added it again to the end of the file. So guys, that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you want to see more Visual Basic tutorials, all Java, all C Sharp, be sure to subscribe. I will be posting more of these. Uh, reading from a file, editing a record, and deleting a record are all going to be coming soon as well for Visual Basic. So if you want the whole quadrilogy of this of file handling, be sure to subscribe as well. Thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.